Come to the world-famous dunes of Pismo Beach, California. Drive your truck in the sand. Bring your mother-in-law along for the ride. And bring your kids and bring all your kids' friends. But where, oh where, will you stay? Let's take a look at the Pismo Beach campgrounds and see what they have to offer, how much it costs, and how hard it is to get a spot there. So you have to make your reservations at ReserveCalifornia.com six months in advance. It costs $35 a night to stay in the campground. And if you want to actually stay on the beach itself, that's even cheaper. It's $10 a night if you want to sleep on the sand. And for day use, it's $5 a day to take your truck out there. And the beach is close enough to the campground where we didn't even bother airing our tires back up at the end of the day. It's maybe half a mile from the beach. Behold the spacious accommodations, parking for two vehicles. In this case, we've squeezed some big Z71 Chevys in there. And enough room for a couple of tents. And uh, a lot of dirt, a little fire pit, a little picnic table. So all in all, it's your general purpose campground. Uh, can't complain about it, it's really nice. Some spots have shade and some don't, ours didn't. But if you want to scout it out for next time, look for the one that does have shade. Now, there is an RV side where there's RV camping and the RV people also get bathrooms and showers and bigger concrete spots to park their RVs on and they also have hookups for you so the electricity and the water goes in and the poop comes out and everything is just like you were in your own house and of course the campground has showers and toilets so the showers run on tokens so you just have to exchange your money for shower tokens and then spend that money on a shower. Two tokens will give you a decent shower. And if you want to save these as commemorative collector's items, they are quite beautiful as well. There's California State Parks on one side, Oceano Dunes on the other. And the campground hosts also sell firewood if you need that. And there's a little liquor store, convenience store just outside of the campground. So you can pretty much have anything you need there or get it if you've got money. And the visitor center was closed the whole time we were out there because we were always out on the dunes. But I hear it's very nice with a little museum. And then you want to get out and wreck your truck in the sand, knowing that you can come back and take a shower, get clean, and sit around a campfire at night. If you don't have a truck, it's 15 bucks an hour to rent an ATV, and they rent dune buggies and all kinds of other things out there as well. If you're into nature, there's some nice little trails around the campsite that were really fun to walk on and look for the weird little animal tracks and just kind of have some peace and quiet. Uh, Sometimes of year the monarch butterflies migrate through here so you can see them all over the place hanging in the trees and flying around. That's really pretty as well. And it's just a good place to kind of sit and chill in between out, going out and punishing your truck in the dirt. You can just take a seat on the bench in the morning, have your cup of coffee, look out upon the beautiful lake and just meditate on how awesome it is to live in California. And if you want to learn something, there's a lot of educational material there too and little animals you can look for. They even have beaver there. I didn't see any beaver when I was there, unfortunately, but apparently they do have it. And alligator lizards are pretty cool. I wish I'd seen some of those. I know I saw their footprints. And then there are black crowned night herons that are really hard to find, but they're out there. I went stalking them and I was able to find one in the bushes. Whoa, look there among the branches. It's the rare and beautiful black crowned night heron. Oh, that's a big birdie. And if you want to do adventures with nature, they have a whole schedule of things. Jeez, I should have put my beer down when I shot this. But they've got a whole schedule of talks and hikes and things that you can do that are pretty neat. Whoa, there's some nature right there. The rare black-crested night snail in his natural habitat over glass. So at this point you might be saying, hey, it's a beach. Does anybody swim at the beach or do they just all rip around on trucks and four-wheelers in the beach? Well, the answer is, yes, you can. Make sure you learn about rip currents and how to break the grip of the rip. And you can absolutely surf there or swim there if you want to. And uh, every time I'm there, I like the mushy little waves that, that are coming in. Even on a blown out day like this, you can get a decent little ride. And it'd be fun to bring a longboard out there and just splash around and take a day off or a half a day off or a morning off from trying to break my truck and just get out there and get some nice little rides. Not a lot of competition out there, not a lot of surfers, so not a lot of territorial fighting, just good times in the waves. And there is no lifeguard on duty, so you'll disappear if you get in trouble out there. There's also submerged objects. I don't know what's submerged out there, probably people's trucks. And if you want to fish and stay on the edge of the water, there's a lot of people fishing. I actually saw two of these guys pull fish out of the water while I was going on my morning walk. So the fish are out there and they're biting. And if you like boogie boarding but you're afraid of submerged objects and riptides, there is always sand boogie boarding as well. So there you go. You have no excuse. You have $10. And so you could come out here and camp on the beach and drive around in the sand and have a good old time with your friends if you wanted to. 
So get out there, drive by day, bonfire by night, and uh, bring the kids, give them something to remember when they're old, and have a great time. All right, Jimmy. All right, what do you reckon? How was that? That was so fun. That was